division title on the line. The skyline of Chicago on the hottest summer day of the year so far. It's 97 some places, it's 99 some places, it may be over 100 in some other places. It is hot. The lake is very busy. Inside Soldier Field, where today's ball game is going to be played, the temperature on the playing surface will be well beyond 130 degrees before the day is done. But it is a very important football game in the USFL Central Division between Chicago and Michigan. Atlantic Division, it's Philadelphia with Boston still in the hunt. They in the hunt for the wild card spot. Chicago has won the toss. They will receive the kickoff from Novo Bojovic, young man out of Central Michigan who's become quite a popular character with the Michigan Panthers. And as a matter of fact, he's become a very valuable football player for them. His field goal last week saving them against the Washington Federals 27-25. Lenny Willis has been a great story this year for the Chicago Blitz, a great story in Lenny's life because he was out of football in Columbus, Ohio and got a chance to come back and you saw the numbers. He's averaging 21 yards per kickoff return. He doesn't understand the word fair catch. And he, uh, last week in the ball game against Birmingham, again came up with a big pass reception. So he is a very important personality. Bojovic kick through the end zone and gone. So Chicago will go to work from the 20. And they will line up this way with the veteran Bobby Scott of Tennessee at quarterback. The setbacks that Lynn Swan talked about, Tim Spencer and Kevin Long. Long needs 40 yards to go over 1,000, joining Spencer. Trumaine Johnson leads the league in pass receiving. Wayman Bugs equally dangerous, not quite as big. And the tight end, Paul Ricker, has had a fine season. The first play of the ball game now as Bugs and Johnson come wide as a tandem to the bottom of the picture. And they give the football off to Tim Spencer and Spencer, 6'1", 210-pound rookie out of Ohio State, sticks his head in there for about three yards. Up front, Chicago lines up with Rob Taylor at tackle, 280 pounds, Tom Thayer of Notre Dame at 250, Wally Pursuit of Kentucky at 255, Tim Norman, 275 out of Illinois, Nick Iyer, 275 BYU, Ricker is a big fella, 6'3", 245. Second down, seven coming up for Chicago. Michigan showing right now a six-man front. They put a little heat in there as Parker comes looping in from the outside. The play goes inside for the second time. Spencer carrying the ball. And he's got very little out of that one, maybe a yard. The Michigan defense. And here's where I think in the early going it's going to be very important. Ronnie Padgett, David Tipton, and Alan Hughes, the three down linemen. The linebacking four for these guys are tough. Kyle Borland, Robert Pennywell, Ray Bentley, and Johnny Corker. The secondary, and there's heat on them with Johnson and Bugs. Chapman, Davis, Osborne, and Greenwood. Third down and five. Long five for Chicago. They give it off inside to Mac Boatner, and Boatner is going to be short of the first down. When they send in Dennison, number 21, and Boatner, the fullback, number 43, normally Dennison becomes a fourth receiver for them. And once in a while, Boatner will get a call, but that time it didn't work. So Chicago will have to punt it away on fourth down and two as the Michigan defense holds the blitz in their first possession. Anthony Carter is the return man for Michigan, and he is a good one. He is very dangerous. 41.3 yard average for Frank Corral. He's been kicking very well over the last half dozen ball games. Carter averaging just under 10 yards per punt as a high hanger. It goes to the sideline. Carter has no chance as Corral hits up beauty and knocks it out of bounds at the Michigan 18 yard line. A 57 yard punt. Wow. So they get off to a pretty good start with their kicking game anyway. Bobby A. Bear, number 11, 6'4", 210, 22 years of age, out of Northwest Louisiana, comes in at quarterback. John Williams and Ken Lacey line up at the running backs, 200 and 220 pounds, respectively. Anthony Carter, the wide man. Derek Holloway of Arkansas, not too big, but so fast. Mike Cobb is the big wide receiver at 6'5", 255, out of Michigan State. So the first play coming up now for Michigan. On the second play against Washington last week, they went deep for Carter and got him and got a touchdown out of it. Let's see if they send Anthony on a fly early. Spread the blitz secondary. Nope. They trip up to the backfield. Lacey finds a hole and breaks 
out of there. He banged into the quarterback as Abar slipped and fell coming off the snap that sort of overran him. <laughs> the offensive line of Michigan opened up a hole a truck could have driven through. That time, Lacey just took the ball. So watch, watch this offensive line charge here. There you see the blocking, the hole opening up. Dornbrook pinning 22 yards in the carry. Now he slipped, but the hole is still there. Number 52, White, can't make the play. And he's downfield, looking for some running room. Finally, the tackle made by Luther Bradley and Don Schwartz. First down after 29, uh, 39 for Michigan. You may see a lot of uh, slipping and, and uh, falling today because it's so hot. Shoes may get hot and start sticking. Sideline pattern, drill to Holloway. Pass is complete at the 46. The pickup is about seven yards. The offensive front for Michigan, Chris Godfrey out of Michigan, 250-pounder at tackle. Tyrone McGriff, 265 at guard. Wayne Radloff, 265 at center. He's out of Georgia. McGriff from Florida A&M by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Another ex-Steeler, Tom Dornbrook out of Kentucky, 250 at guard. Ray Penny, the tackle out of Washington, at 255 pounds. Those are the three ex-Steelers, McGriff, Dornbrook, and Penny. And Cobb, we told you, big fella, 6'5", out of Michigan State. Second down and three for the Panthers. No score, first quarter. Plays inside. And not much. Number 56, Ed Smith just absolutely plugged the hole. He was, ten, he was right in the hole when the running back came up to the line. Defensive charge was very good this time. You see Smith filling in on the inside, stopping Lacey right in the hole. Good form tackle. Gain is a little less than a yard, so now Michigan is looking at third down and two. John Williams goes out. You get two tight end alignment here. Lacey will be the lone back. You get two tight ends and two wide receivers. You see very quickly Chicago's defense. And third down and two. Hey, Bear's going to throw it. He goes for Carter. He's got it. had one leg that's all that's all and had he not had the one leg with the kind of speed Anthony Carter has would have been a touchdown the Chicago defensive coordinator Dick Walker a former Pittsburgh Steeler coach told me before the game what he thought they would be able to do is try and do is get pressure on the quarterback Bobby Hebert because he's young sometimes has a problem reading defenses that time he didn't have a problem finding Anthony Carter downfield who is their big play receiver first down Michigan Chicago 39 Michigan won the first meeting 17-12 back in April. Hey there, play action, going deep for Carter. Now it's Holloway, and Holloway is double teamed and really no chance. I don't think Derek could even see it. Well, no, you couldn't see it. Both uh, Carl Allen and Luther Bradley flanking him, and when A Bear ran a little play action, he was kind of trying to pick him out in two areas, picked him out with the play action, getting to the outside, giving himself a little bit more time, and he had a good deal of running room. But then he had Holloway running a hook-and-go pattern, hoping that the cornerback and the safety would come up and play the run. But good, smart defense. They stayed with the receiver all the way. Plus the fact there have been all awful lot of quarterbacks hurt this year. That's right. He's running around out there, and a big old tackle gets you. Second down and ten. That's John Williams. Inside the 35 to the 32. The officials today, Don Wilson, the referee, umpires Ed Manning, headlinesman Roger McMinn, L.T. Bonner, the line judge, back judge is Dick Eichhorst, the field judge is Bill Schmitz. It's a holding call, it's against Michigan. Veteran offensive lineman using veteran holding techniques. <laughs> too hot to be funny now. <laughs> <laughs> we have holding number one on the offense. Second down. Carter. And, excuse me. They're, they're rubbing <laughs> off on the little guys. Look at Anthony Carter here. Let's just find out where right there he gets his arm wrapped around Virgil Livers. You gotta keep the arms inside. Who's holding? Hmm. Well right now Virgil Livers is manhandling Anthony Carter. Back him up five, it's second down and 15. About 17. Over the middle, could have been intercepted. Stan White 
was the only man who had a chance for it, and that time the Blitz were able to get some pressure on A Bear, and they plucked him pretty good. Bobby A Bear had no idea that Stan White was in position because Joe Ehrman and company were right in on top of him. Watch, watch him come through here. He throws Powell right there, gets hit. Well, he must have tripped later on because he was lying on his back. But they do get the desired pressure on them, almost an interception, but Stan White couldn't hang on to it. Call well, it third down and about 16 now. The ball is just outside the 45 after the holding call. Their conversion rate on third down this season is about 37%. A little play action fake, give it inside to Lacey. Lacey is going into where they've got him at the 42. Junior Ayu, who finally has rehabilitated a sore knee enough to make a start here, and the veteran lineman brings him down. And so it's fourth down for Michigan, and they'll kick it away. The man who does the kicking for the Michigan Panthers is David Greenwood, and Greenwood, of course, plays in the defensive secondary at strong safety, punted early in the season. Rick Partridge then took over. He was cut, and you can see Greenwood's done a fine job averaging over 41 yards per punt. There's no pressure on him, gets it out of there in a hurry. He just got a big, strong leg, and he just... May not be the most graceful punter you're going to see, but I'll tell you this, he gets the job done, doesn't he? He knocks that thing out of bounds on the three-yard line. Field position. Chicago got it, and they got a great punt by Frank Crowell, Greenwood. The Chicago Blitz will go to work now from their three. First down, and they put in three tight ends. Paul Rickard, Doug Cozen, and Tim Reitman all in there. That simply means that at least they're going to show Michigan run. Show it, I wouldn't be... Looking for the pass, George Allen to show him run and try and hit the little short pass to either Spencer or Lacey, Spencer or Long coming out of the backfield. Well, that whole Michigan team is in there stacked on the defense. And they jump all over Kevin Long as he gets a couple of yards out of the five, maybe the six. Keith, one of the key matchups I think we're going to have to keep an eye on throughout the day is the center for Chicago, Wallet Pursuit, against David Tipton, the nose tackle for Michigan. The last drive, the first drive for Chicago, all the plays were right up the middle, trying to soften it up a little bit. And Tipton's the man inside, Wally pursuits the center, he's the man that's going to have to take him one side or the other, open up the initial hole for Long or Spencer. Put it on the six. Second down and about seven. It's just Tim Spencer. Whoa, what a hit on Spencer. Oh, he took a lick from a blitzing linebacker, Ray Bentley, number 50, out of Central Michigan. Bentley, 220-pounder, a 22-year-old rookie. Uh, they've probably got the best linebacking core in the USFL. Just take a look. They get good blocking up front. He has to turn it inside because the cornerback coming up putting pressure. Right there, Bentley just fills the hole perfectly. Carries out his assignment, stops him. They lost yards on the play. They're back to the three-yard line. So oh, it's third down, call it nine. Going to run it again with Kevin Long. He comes back to about the six. And here comes the kicking team. So Chicago, very conservative inside the five-yard line, especially so after they realized that Michigan was willing to play them to job on them and, and gamble some with the defense. So Corral comes in to punt from his end zone. His first kick today was a 57-yarder. They need another one right here. Anthony Carter standing back at midfield. And the pressure on as Corral is flattened on the kick. No flag on the play. Somebody got a piece of the ball, and that makes the kicker legal game. And old Frank gets up kind of gingerly as he was spread out. 32 yards on the punt. Mr. Deceived me on this. I don't believe you can see that anybody touches the ball. And I think you'll also see that nobody really touched Frank until the foot was down. He was going into a full faint the moment the ball was cleared. Well, unfortunately, he attended the UCLA acting school <laughs> and not the USC school of drama, and he couldn't pull it off. <laughs> the Fisher was in good, good position that time to make or not make a bad call. So here's Michigan operating now from the Chicago 39. First down for the Panthers. No score in the first quarter with 7.50 to go in Bear Drops back to throw. Goes down the middle with it. He's got a man. The pass is caught by Ken Lacey out of the backfield. And Michigan goes on top. Touchdown. 39-yard scoring strike. Bear to Lacey. So it's the Michigan Panthers to strike first and strike hard. 39 yards and a play-action pass from Bobby Bear to Ken Lacey. Defensive line looking for the run. A good play-action fake. Gives himself lots of time. Look at the blocking up front. 
number 63 doing a great job. And there, Lacey, down the middle, a two-deep zone. That's the soft spot in it. Uses his strength, bounces into the end zone. Keep in mind that he is a 225-pounder out of Tulsa. He is a tough runner. The extra point drive by Viovich. He's 42 out of 45 this year. Chip shot is up, and it is good. At seven minutes and 45 seconds to play in the first quarter. The Michigan Panthers take the lead seven to nothing. Is that man right there? Ken Mason scores from 39 yards out on a pass from Bobby Abair. That's his second touchdown catch of the, of the season, adding another catch to, number, to his 37 total. Simple little route from the backfield, straight down the middle, the heart of the defense. Again, his weight and size, carrying him into the end zone, and the Michigan Panthers now have a seven-point lead. Five. Ty Big, super heavyweight in boxing. Little Floyd Favors is in there. Favors is one of my favorites. I remember at Munich in the World Championships when he won his gold medal. I, he was absolutely the happiest young man I've ever seen in my life. So it'll be fun to watch the National Sports Festival, 445 today here on ABC. Here's a young man who was born in Tito Grad, Yugoslavia. Went to school at Central Michigan. He's now the place kicker for the Michigan Panthers, and he's ready to kick it off with his team out on top seven to nothing in the first quarter. Yesterday, he was the subject of a little football humor. They taped him to the goalpost during practice. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Oh, Lenny Willis is four yards deep in the end zone and is coming out. And it's a mistake. <laughs> he came out, but he didn't come out very far. It was a good high kick. Excellent hang time on the kick. Michigan Panthers special teams player getting down very, very quickly. Ira Albright, when Ira comes down on the special teams and makes a tackle, one of these, he gets so excited, I think one of these days is going to hurt somebody. Now watch him. He'll get involved in the play here. Here he comes. Big number 67 gets him down. He jumps up. He's got to high five everybody in town before he gets <laughs> to the sideline. They got Willis at the 12. That's where Chicago's got to go to work. The Blitz have not had much field position so far in the ball game. Bobby Scott drops, looks, and throws to the sidelines. Finds Tremaine Johnson out on the 25. And Johnson has a first down for Chicago. Right now, let's check in with our colleague Tim Brandt on the hot sidelines with Ken Lacey. Ken, if he had saw, if he had seen something in the series before, and he said, "I can't tell you," but tell us about the touchdown play. Well, uh, primarily, uh, we use AC and Derek Holloway as decoys, and all I do is just, you know, kind of trinket down the middle behind coverage, and Bobby tried to hit me in that little hole down there, and it worked that time. He was open. Okay, Keith. AC being Anthony Carter, of course. Thank you. First down. The ball is up just outside the 25. There's the hit on Ricker, and he can't hold on to the ball. As they go to the tight end, and coming up to make the hit was Clarence Chapman out of Eastern Michigan. And Clarence, 29 years of age, played seven years of professional ball before coming into this league. Clarence was in excellent position. You see right there, <laughs> Ricker's got the ball in his hands, but, but Chapman just comes up, hits him. Knocks it away, takes it away from him. Ricker comes off the field at the tight end position. Keith, that's the kind of pattern and hit that uh, you know can cause damage because Ricker wasn't even couldn't even see Chapman. Nope. He's hurt. Second down and ten, they take it up the middle. And the gain is from the 26 up to about the 28. Kevin Long, the five-year pro veteran out of South Carolina. Now they'll be looking at third down and about seven. Los Angeles leading Washington 7-0 in the first quarter. John Barnett has scored. Of course, the big score out of that Pacific Division was yesterday. As Oakland beat Boston 17-16, though they could wind up with the same numbers, L.A. and, and uh, Oakland. Uh, Oakland would get the call out of that division because of the tiebreaker process. Scott back to throw on third and seven. Has no pressure and gets it off down the sideline to Dennis. Doug Dennison, peeling out of the backfield, makes the catch in Chicago. Moves to the Michigan side of the field. Bobby Scott does a good job of setting this up because he's, he's faking the football, pretending like he's going to throw a little bit sooner, trying to draw the coverage up. Watch here, he fakes a pump there, gets a defensive back to hesitate, 
Then Dennison gets a step on him, makes a catch right down the sideline, two feet in, out of bounds, big game for Chicago. Just inside the 45 of Michigan. They send Bugs in motion on the first down play, hand the ball off to Tim Spencer. And Spencer cannot outrun the coverage as Greenwood, the strong safety supporting on the left side, runs him down. Number 59, Robert Pennywell, also the linebacker coming in on the play. Doing a good job of stringing the play out, getting some support from Greenwood, making the stop for a short game. Give him two. Robert out of Grambling. The ball is at the 42 of Michigan. Second down, eight. Six minutes to go in the first quarter, and Michigan leading seven to nothing. They're playing Trumaine Johnson right now, man coverage. Chapman's got him. They go the other way for Bugs, and Wayman can't get to it. He, uh, Scott had him, but he couldn't get the ball to him. Scott had him, led him a little bit too far to the outside. When the quarterback has that kind of pass play, Keith, he would rather overthrow him, lead him too far to the outside than inside. Because if the defensive back is beat, he's in an excellent position to step in front of that ball if it's thrown short and run it down the sideline for a touchdown. So they try and be extra careful during the sideline route. Third down and eight. Dennison and Boatner are in the backfield now. That's your passing combination. Dennison coming out of there. Gives him four receivers. Scott stands up quickly. Loops it up for Tremaine Johnson. He's got it. Slipped in behind Oliver Davis. And it's first down Chicago at the Michigan 17. Scored two touchdowns last week against Birmingham on that same kind of play. Jermaine Johnson, one-on-one -on -one coverage, the best receiver in the league. Jermaine Johnson, number two. Out of Grambling, you see right there, ball's thrown over the defensive back's head. He can't see it. Jermaine concentrates, keeps his eye on the ball, and hauls it in. Bobby Scott threw an excellent pass. Whistle, stop it. A false, a false start. Number 68 on the offense. First down. Guess who? Tim Norman again. <laughs> to look at Jim Stanley, the Panther coach. Jim Former Stanley. Head coach at Oklahoma State. Jim Stanley's a very loose, relaxed coach. The players like him. They respond well to him. And not too uptight during the week. But when it comes to game day, he doesn't like any distractions for his players. Doesn't want anybody that's not supposed to be in the locker room in there. Really doesn't want his ball players bothered too much during the course of that game. Becomes very strict. Five yard penalty puts the ball between the hash marks 22-23. Back goes Scott to throw. He's got Johnson wide open. But the pressure gets to him. Scott has to pull it down and run it. And he gets back to about the 17. Johnson had broken free, but Scott had to pull it down and run for it. Bobby's only six feet, so those big six, five, six, seven linemen can total your vision pretty quick. Well, they sent Tremaine in motion. They got the coverage mixed up just a bit. Right there, he's breaking to the outside, but he is he is still covered. You see this number 21 out there, ready to make the play, Oliver Davis. What do you think George Allen was doing when he saw Bobby Scott running with the football? Turned his head. Turned. Second down, about 11. Scott again running away from the pressure. They get him. High the line of scrimmage. It's Bentley. Rookie out of Central Michigan comes in, does a very, very good job. When Bobby Scott was at, at New Jersey, they played Michigan, and John Corker sacked him six times. That was a different offensive line. As we take a look at Tremaine Johnson running the route, he gets wide open this time, running a little corner route, but there's no time for Bobby Scott to see him. So it is third down now with a loss all the way back to the 26. Third down at about 20. Parker's after him. Parker's got it. John Parker went a long time without getting a sack. Last week he got a sack. Now he comes back, reintroduces himself to Bobby Scott. Watch him run over Mac Boatner here. He runs over. John Corker will switch from side to side. Right there, he got under Boatner, threw him back into Bobby Scott, then went around to the outside, reached around, grabbed him by the waist, pulled him down. 
out of Oklahoma State. He played for Jim Stanley when Jim Stanley was a head coach there. I remember him as a sophomore. In fact, Jim and I were talking about it this morning. He had one of the great sophomore seasons of all time as a linebacker and then sort of tailed off for a while, but now he's back with Jim and he's playing great. Corral comes in to punt on fourth down and a half mile. He'll hit it from about the 44. Obviously, he's going to try to kick it away from Anthony Carter and knock it out of bounds. There's no pressure, and he spins it to the sidelines. It's a little tail dragger that's going to dribble down and out of bounds at the five. On the five-yard line, but at the same time, a Michigan player was running onto the field. Anthony Carter was waving to him to go back to stay off the field. He came on the field. The ball was snapped, and then he ran back off the sideline. After the ball was snapped, so there was a flag thrown, probably 12 men on the field. I would think they probably refused this because you've got the ball marked down there very close to the five-yard line, so there'd be no point in trying to do it again. You might miss it knocking the end zone this time. That's correct, and five yards closer to the end zone is not going to be in Corral's range. Disregard the flag. There was no foul on the play. No, they didn't. Well, so three minutes and 56 seconds to go in the first quarter. 7 nothing. Michigan. And uh, there was a little bit of contact as he went into the end zone. Call it the Michigan 6 now as the Panthers go to work leading 7 0 in the ball game. First quarter. Very hot day, 97, forecast was for 99 degrees today in Chicago. Bobby Bear in the end zone, in trouble, gets his pass off. Pass is incomplete intended for Mike Cobb. He saw a white shirt and threw it. Yeah, he saw fear and threw it is what he saw. He rolled Carl. around to the outside, number 71, Carl Lorch, yes. had boxed it in, did a good job of containing it, almost had a good shot at making a tackle here. Bobby Bear, a young quarterback showing some smart, Heads up moves here, just stops, ducks inside right here. Number 61, it's Tyrone McGriff, just knocking Lorch out of the way, gets the ball away, it's incomplete, but more importantly, he saves the safety. Second down and 10, Michigan's total offense now 87 yards here in the first quarter with uh, the play this time going inside. Gain is a couple of yards as Ken Lacey carries, big guy from Tulsa. I don't know what the problem uh, is right now between A. Bear and Lacey. And that's about the third time they've come close to not getting that exchange. Bobby A. Bear had to extend himself a good deal to get the ball to Ken Lacey. And if and if they get someone in on a good rush there, they can knock that ball loose. The five defensive backs in for Chicago now on third down and eight. Lacey, and Lacey gets out across the 10. There he is brought down by Carl Allen and Eddie Brown. Brown free safety and Allen a cornerback, and they reacted well to the running play and stopped him short of the first down, and now Michigan will have to punt, and Chicago should get pretty good field position out of this. Eddie Brown coming in for Luther Bradley, who, as you heard from Tim Brandt, went in the other shoulder, x-rayed. Lenny Willis back to return punch. Lenny Willis and Anthony Carter are the only two people in the USFL who return kick, who have returned punch for touchdowns. Very dangerous return. Greenwood to kick it. Low line drive. Can't be fielded by Willis and uh, the result, Michigan coverage downfield. They get about a 15 yard bounce and roll out of it. So it turns out to be a handsome punt effort by David Greenwood and Chicago will have the football backed up to their own 31 after a 56 yard championship. Michigan can win it if they beat Chicago today and beat Arizona at home next week. There's more to it. I'll give you the rest of it in a minute. As Bobby Scott drops back to throw the football all day. He's got Johnson. Remains open on the sideline. And he is down at the Michigan 41. Well, Chicago started out on the 31-yard line, the best field position of the day. Bobby Scott, when you get that much time to throw the football, you can wait for a receiver to come open. Look at the, look at the wall of protection, Thayer, while in pursuit. Everyone up front, giving him the time, driving people behind the quarterback, Bobby Scott, taking the time, finding Jermaine Johnson coming across the field. 
Tremaine now three catches 66 yards first down Chicago Michigan 41. Scott hands the ball off to Tim Spencer. Spencer goes to the 35. Gain of six on the play. Let me continue now with the playoff picture. Philadelphia is in. Oakland is in and they're using Polaroid uh, still pictures on the Chicago side. They're taking them upstairs and running them downstairs. What that does it gives them a gives them literally a picture of what the offensive and defensive units are trying to do so the ball players can go onto the field with a better idea of how to stop it. And I don't know if it's all legal. Not in college. Ball goes down to about the 32 on Spencer's carry. Now here's Carl Lorch with Tim Brandt. Keith, you just saw the pictures that they're using. Do those pictures help, Carl? Yeah, they do. They're very uh, helpful. Show us the, uh, the blocking schemes, you know, right away. As soon as we come off, we know what they're doing. Has Michigan shown you anything that has surprised you? Just the uh, play action uh, early in the game. You know, we thought they'd try to establish a running game right off and then go with the play action, but they came with it right away. Okay, thanks, KP. Tim Norman uh, coming off the field, holding an arm. That'll put Jim uh, Lohman into the ball game, probably at that guard position. But Tim Norman's shaken up and comes off the field. It is third down and a yard for Chicago. Long and Spencer are the setback. They're unbalanced to the right. Double tight in alignment. Scott's going to throw it on third and one. He throws it good. Pass is caught by Ricker. And now you'll get a penalty flag as Ricker was thrown down off the field of play. He was out of bounds, and one of the Michigan players grabbed him by the coattail and dragged him out and threw him down. So Greenwood is going to get a flag. Number 31, David Greenwood. <laughs> Paul Ricker caught the pass, got the first down, and Greenwood just reached out and grabbed him by the back of the jersey, and actually he looks a little small to be able to throw a guy down that easily. He just reached up, he's 6'3", 210, but when you compare him to uh, Ricker, who's 6'3", 245, he just reached back, grabbed him by the back of the shirt, and flung him. The penalty moves the football down to the 11th where it is first down Chicago. Chicago having a good deal of success passing the ball, opening up their offense. We have a personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 31 on the defense after the play. It's first down. Bobby Scott orchestrating that successful passing game is now five for seven for 104 yards. Tremaine Johnson, three for 66. Not a bad average. That's Bugs in motion. Spencer with the ball. Sweep right. Michigan handles it at the scrimmage line. Greenwood supporting with Pennywell making the stop. Here's your personal foul call now against Greenwood. And you can see right there, Ricker has the ball. He gets up field, steps out of bounds right there. And Greenwood right there just grabs him and to the turf, I think he was a little more off balance than anything else. But the fact that he pulled him, had the hands on him, the official thought that it was all his effort. It was a silly foul, but it was. Yes. The first quarter is over. Chicago Blitz are trailing the Michigan Panthers by a score. The numbers here at Soldier Field in the first quarter of play between Chicago and Michigan. Chicago has been throwing the ball quite a bit more because they haven't really had success running the game. They've been trying up the middle, but the Michigan defensive line has stopped them. And Ken Lacey has been a workhorse. 33 yards are all his on five carries in rushing. 39 of those 60 yards are his on the big touchdown. Chicago just inside the 11 as Tremaine Johnson goes into the end zone. Scott rolls that way, throws for him. Pass incomplete. Covering on the play, Clarence Chapman. That time, Clarence Chapman did a good job. Uh, Tremaine Johnson had an opportunity to catch the ball. But Chapman just put some pressure on him. Stripped the ball away from him. Again, they put Tremaine Johnson in motion, trying to get the one-on-one. -on -one. They get it, makes a little move to the outside. Chapman gets turned around, not what you want to do in a situation like this. Right there, he grabs the arm, pulls him away, and number 50, Ray Bentley, almost had a chance to pick it off. Mac Boatner is now in the backfield for Chicago. Good blocker. It is third down and 10. They swing it out, and Boatner loses his footing. He's down at the 15. There is a penalty flag. It is so hot down on that artificial surface, the rug, 
that literally your shoes are going to get soft. I was down there yesterday running, testing it out. Brought back some memories of some hot games I played in. This field will get up to well over 100 degrees. It softens that rubber, so when the ball player tries to run, that rubber on the bottom gives, also the leather on top. Yeah. Penalties against Chicago. So what these players have to be concerned about is that footing, the heat, and possibly spraining their ankles. That was a third down play, and he indicated there, loss of down. Let me see. That's the way it is. If that's the way it's going to be, then that'll get Corral in the ball game for a field goal try. Here's the call by Don Wilson. We have pass interference. Number two on the offense, which is loss of down. It's fourth down. So Corral is in for a field goal try, trying to get Chicago on the scoreboard with Michigan leading 7-0 as we begin the second quarter of play. The Blitz were down there knocking on the door, but they got turned away. Now they're going for three. The ball will be marked at the 28. It'll be a 38-yard field goal try. He's seven out of 16 from this distance. Block! It is blocked by Chapman. Chicago comes back to cover it. Corral picks it up, and Corral is covered. Back up field, all the way back at the 31. It was Clarence Chapman who came firing through the block it. Great job coming underneath the loft. Watch Chapman, watch him come right here over the top. He comes underneath the block right there. Perfect position as he lays out. Ball hits him right in the chest. Now watch the mistake here that Corral makes. Frank picks up the ball and starts running the wrong way, trying to get some blocking so he can turn back up field. But nothing doing as uh, Michigan came right on down with Corker, the man that finally knocked him down. From the time he touched the ball, after it was blocked, he lost 20 yards trying to handle that ball. The ball now marked at the 35-yard line, and Frank Corral was helped off the field. Take a look at it again from our end zone camera. There's a kick in the block by Chapman. Watch the ball's bouncing away. Corral should pick it up, just fall on it. Now he picks it up. His momentum carries him further downfield, looping around until Corker comes in and stops it. And Michigan's defense makes a big play now. The offense goes to work at the Chicago 35 and Hebert trying to strike quick to Carter. Touchdown. Number 32, Carl Allen out of Southern Mississippi does not have the speed. 35 yards and a quick strike. The second time that the Michigan team has now struck quickly and put points on the scoreboard. Both of them coming by way of the pass. First to Ken Lacey, now to Anthony Carter wearing number one. He gives an outside move to Carl Allen, gets him turned, and he is dead once he turns his back. The speed of Anthony Carter too much. 35-yard touchdown catch. So they've got 39 and 35-yard touchdown plays. Off the forward pass, and they lead 13-0. Bojovic in for the extra point try. Older is Whit Taylor, the rookie quarterback out of Vanderbilt. Old is good, the kick is good. So Michigan, very impressive here in this first half of play as they now lead the Chicago Blitz by a score of 14 to nothing. If Michigan wins the ball game today, they can win the Central Division Championship with a win. Anthony Carter makes it look easy. And it's 14 nothing Michigan. We're kicking off now with Lenny Willis deep for Chicago. Michigan game plan was stop Chicago's running game and they have done it. Chicago's game plan was to put pressure on Bobby Bear, and they have not done it. Low bouncing kick off to Eddie Brown. Brown to the sideline. And the crafty veteran finds his way beyond the 35 before Will Coakley can knock him out of bounds. Let's check in on what's happened to Chicago's kicker, Frank Corral. Timmy? Keith, Frank Corral is right behind me. He did take a shot on the hip. His leg does seem to be okay. He's trying to loosen it up now. He's sitting on some ice on the bench here. He has it wrapped, as you can see. Also, in that same play, Clarence Chapman, who blocked it, got hit right in the chin by the football. He has gone in for some stitches. Whoa. It hurts. Hard football. 36-yard line, market. First down, Chicago. A full 13 pounds of pressure. Reitman, the tight end, going in motion. They hand the ball off inside. Gary 
scoring is Kim Kevin Long. Long needing 40 yards going into today's ball game to join Tim Spencer with a thousand or more. Keith, that reference, of course, about the ball having 13 pounds of pressure was made because of George Allen's uh, accusation, I guess you'd call it, last week in Birmingham thought the balls were underinflated. Had the officials check every football at halftime before they came back in and won the football game. Second down and six from the 40. Scott to throw. Goes short. Pass good to Reitman. Big rookie out of UCLA. One of the first players signed by the Chicago Blitz. They've got him marked up beyond the 45. He may be just short of his first down. Get a look at John Corker. John Corker, linebackers, the Michigan Panthers can keep the pressure on them. They're going to have a good day. He just gets a little push there on Reitman, stays within range, gets back in the zone, comes up, makes a tackle. Doesn't let the big tight end on the UCLA go too far. That's his first catch of the season, having been hurt most of the season. Third down, a half a yard. And into the stack goes Kevin Long. Behind his offensive line surge, he's got the first down. Chicago has been able to move the ball extremely well, but both times they've been in excellent scoring position have come away empty. Give you an idea of how the, the game is going now. Michigan is averaging almost seven yards per carry on the ground. Most of it with Lacey. It's Chicago's running game, they're really their primary weapon here. They're averaging only two yards per rush so far. Scott back. Parker after him. He gets the pass away. Complete to Tim Reitman, and that's the first down for Chicago at the 41 of Michigan. John Corker was in on Bobby Scott. He made the tackle on Scott, putting pressure on, but Bobby was able to get it away. You see Corker, number 57, right there, being blocked by Tim Spencer. Then he throws Spencer away, excuse me, Kevin Long, throws Long away and makes the hit, but not before Bobby Scott finds Tim Wright. They mark it now just short of the 40. So call it the 40-yard line. Scott's going to keep throwing it. Not this time. It's going to be a loss of a yard or so, and he took a pretty good whack. He sure did. Number 98, Alan Hughes, came around from his right end position to turn Bobby Scott in into the rest of the charging defensive linemen so that the play could be made. Carl that's, Boylan making the tackle. That's the third sack for the Michigan defenders. Games yesterday, New Jersey beat Arizona 21 to 14. Herschel Walker got poked in the right eye. Some blurred vision, but uh, he stayed in the ball game and scored eventually in the fourth quarter to win the game. Second down, call it 12. Scott back. Has time for Bugs. And Wayman Bugs falling out of bounds. Up around the 31, he may be just short of his first down. Ron Osborne, number 23, out of Iowa State, covering him on the play. The spot's a little short of the first down. Osborne just drifted back, maintained good position. Trying to make the tackle on the stop out of Iowa State before women bugs could get to the first down. And they do mark it just short. Boatner is back in there now. With Long. That's the first down. I thought for a moment that the Chicago offensive line might have been off a little early on the left side, but no flag. Keep I have my glasses on that offensive line. Unless the center snapped the ball and we couldn't see it, they were offside. Come on, see you on your it's now 14 to 7 as Billy Taylor has scored for Washington. Ball game being played at Washington today. 14 7 Los Angeles. First half. On the first down, they give it to Spencer. Spencer from the 38 to about the 35. Three yards. The other game played uh, yesterday was out on the West Coast with Oakland. 
beating Boston 17-16. Boston had a touchdown call back. Richard Crump scored very late in the ball game from five yards out, and it was called back because of holding. Boston, however, with a record of 10-7, remains in the chase for that fourth playoff spot, the wild card. That wild card team is going to have the unenviable job of having to go into Philadelphia to play the start. Scott back. His pass away. Johnson's got it. Five, three. They down him at the two. An excellent catch by Tremaine Johnson, John Arnaud, and the 20, number 25 of Iowa State making a tackle. Watch Tremaine Johnson. This is a professional catch right here. Watch the way his hands go up for the ball, palms out, concentrating all the way. Three defensive backs, three defensive people all around him. He maintains his concentration, brings the ball in, puts the ball down just inside the three-yard line. Four catches for 89 yards on the day. First and goal, Chicago. Near the Michigan two. Fumble. Michigan's got it. Mike Edwards. Number 53 comes out of the stack with it. Scott and Pursuit did not execute the snap. The ball popped three. Edwards comes out of there. And once again, Chicago is turned away. Last week in the Friday night game, Chicago had the ball trying to score against Birmingham. There was a fumble, a similar fumble. As we see right there, Bobby Scott not coming up with the ball. Birmingham scored 11 points in a minute and 41 seconds. They cannot afford to make these kinds of mistakes. This is Bill Funny with a live USFL report from Washington. That was Tom Ramsey getting his uh, first touchdown of the year, rushing, giving Los Angeles a 14 to nothing lead. That was 11 seconds into the second quarter. Then Billy Taylor, the former New York Giants star from Texas Tech, ran it in after he set it up on his own run. And he goes in for his sixth TD of the year, 14 to seven LA in front. We have 6.47 to go in the first half. Now let's go back to Chicago and Keith Jackson. Okay, All right, Bill, thanks very much. Fans stirring up what air there is to stir on this day as the Michigan defense now gets a respite with the offense out there having stopped Chicago with a fumble recovery, getting the ball back on the five yard line. Chicago holding the ball. As you see, much more than Michigan. Michigan's two touchdowns having come on two plays require 15 seconds each. 39 and 35 yards scoring strikes. This is Ken Lacey to the outside. And Lacey is up to about the eight, maybe the nine, before Stan White can bring him down. He had number 63, Tom Dornbrook, out in front of him, giving him a good block, a little room so he could turn it up inside and make a few yards. A 99 degree day in Chicago, according to the weatherman. Let's start with the forecast. They mark him at the eight. Well, it's second down and seven, Michigan. Double wide, bottom of the picture. Holloway and Carter. John Williams. Breaks it big, first down, runs over a defensive back. He ran right over Eddie Brown. John Corker with Tim Brandt right now. John Corker is the man who spearheads this defense for Michigan. You know that. It is now 134 degrees on the field. It's got to be taking its toll, John. Yes, it's definitely taking its toll, but the good thing about it is taking its toll on both teams. Uh, I'm glad I'm from Miami, boy, because this is kind of way to be out down there. And <laughs> it's going to help us out in the fourth quarter. We're just going to have to keep the pressure on because it's a hell of a ball club we're playing against today. All right, Keith. Ball is up on the 26. First down for Michigan. They're off the hook again. This time it was Williams who did it. The other time they were backed up, it was Lacey who did it. There's contact in the middle by Lathrop. And he's arguing that there was movement by the Michigan center. Everybody's pointing the finger. The applause from Dornbrook indicates penalty Chicago. Encroachment, number 70 on the defense. First down. And he's right. Let's see, right here. You can see the extended arm of center Wayne Ratloff. It doesn't move. Lathrop just jumps in, pushes him, and points the finger. <laughs> but it doesn't work. It'll be first down and five at the 31 for Michigan. You see, the Blitz have seen a lot of flags this season. 
Carter and Holloway, the white people. Hebert hands that ball inside to Ken Lacey. And Lacey's out to the 36, close to the 37. Good job of just picking his way through a little bit of traffic. Across the line of scrimmage, a good opening hole. Saw a little daylight, scooted a little bit to his left. Enough to pick up another a first down. National Sports Festival coming up at 4.45 Eastern Time. It'll be live. One of the featured performers will be the great world diving champion, Greg Luganis. First down at the 36. And Williams. And this time, John can't find any room. They swing him out and get him at the line of scrimmage. Don Schwartz, number 28. Jim Fonhorst, number 55. John Williams, a 200-pounder out of Michigan State. He is particularly effective, though, in power plays, power sweeps. He scored a lot of touchdowns for them. He's the, almost the designated <laughs> touchdown man. He scored 11 touchdowns on the run, one touchdown through the air, while Ken Lacey has been doing all the work moving the ball down the field, getting in the scoring position. Nice one-two punch. Second down, a little more than 10, as Williams was caught for a half-yard loss. Hebert gives to Lacey. He comes right on up the middle with it. Williams and Lacey are both punishing runners. And when a defensive back the size of Eddie Brown comes up to tackle Ken Lacey, he's given away 20, 25 pounds. And you see that Williams and Lacey both like to drop that shoulder into that defender and whack him. That's right. Punish the little defensive backs. Wear them down. This Michigan team running a, uh, a counter trapping offensive line blocking sc uh, scheme. You see them faking the ball a lot to one side and giving it to the running back, going to the other, giving him the ball, going up the middle and trying to break it to the outside. Close up with a snap. Hebert's pass intended for number 88, Don Eccles. And the ball just sort of floated away from him. He had nothing on it. Eccles had no chance to get to it. Number 32, Carl Allen was over in that area and kept the pressure on him. He got flattened out on the crossing route as he tried to come across the field. Didn't get enough depth. Consequently, the ball was thrown well beyond it. Willis is back. Greenwood to punt. Two kicks of 39 and 56. A 39-yarder he knocked out on the three. High hanger. Forces Willis all the way back to his five. When he's coming with it. Find out run the coverage. They can't do it. Big number 52 after a 50-yard punt. Kyle Buller, the linebacker, was really pumping <laughs> to keep Lenny Willis corralled back there. But we've got penalty flags on the field as we had a little scuffle going on after on the kick return. Well, Lenny Willis got filled to that punt about the five-yard line. Ball may have probably had a good chance of just going back in the end zone, but he didn't want to take a chance and just squirting or bouncing to his right and out of bounds. He takes it, looks upfield, trying to make something happen for his football team. Wants to break a big Number 29. On the kicker, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 25 on the receiver. After the play, offset, first down. 16 yard line. That was the official. This Greenwood after the punt, he gets downfield and right there, <laughs> trying to get a little protection for Lenny. So you've got a timeout with five minutes and 41 seconds to play in the second quarter in Michigan, leading Chicago 14 to nothing. Michigan wins today. They must win over Arizona at home next week in order to win the Central Division. Tampa Bay now, which plays at home against Denver Monday night. Tampa Bay could win the division if they beat Denver and Birmingham in their final two games. Michigan beats Chicago and then loses to Arizona, and Chicago would have to lose their two games. They play Oakland here in Chicago next Sunday. And you have the tiebreaker situation. If Michigan-Chicago winds up, uh, then Michigan would be the winner with a win here today because they would have beat Chicago twice. To get into the tiebreakers, it gets a little complicated. It's much simpler to say if uh, Michigan wins today and beats Arizona next week, then they're home. If Chicago wins today, then they're the playoff spot as the division title. 
is theirs with Tim Spencer running like that. That's really the first time today that the Chicago running game has uh, really done much. And they took the play. Spencer getting handoff here right up the middle, right over David Tipton. You see this big pileup of people. He just breaks through, gets downfield. Number 31, Greenwood, comes in and makes the tackle from behind. That's the first carry they've had over 10 yards of the ball game today. Went from the 16 out to the 29, 13 yards for the first down. Something Better hurry up. Seven seconds on the clock. They got away with it. Carrying the ball is Kevin Long, and Long will get a penalty flag. I think they got a face mask maybe there. I think they're probably going to call spearing by spearing John Arnold. By Arnold. Yeah. Stuck his helmet in there. 53, Mike Edwards is in on the play on the tackle. That's what it is, spearing. You cannot use the helmet as a battering ram or it's an instrument to inflict punishment while the ball player is already down on the surface. We have a personal foul, a late hit, number 25 on the defense, first down. They watch Long, you want to see number 25 at the top of the screen, you see Long going down, now watch him put his helmet right into his back. Totally unnecessary. They ought to make that a, they ought to make that a 25 yard penalty. who knocked him out of bounds that he would have come in but come down inside on the playing surface and it should have been called a, a catch but the official felt that he would have come down out of bounds well he's going to back up 15 yards the other way they had the advantage of a personal foul by michigan for 15 now they're going to go back the other way but instead of being First, first down and on 10, the, it's yeah, now first, down first about 25. 25. Well, that's unsportsmanlike conduct. Let's take a look at it now. It's strictly a judgment call down there. If the receiver goes up in the air and makes a catch, he is not on the ground and he's hit by a defensive back and knocked out of bounds, the official has to decide whether he will come down from bounds or not. Right here he is hit. Without a personal foul. Number 88 on the offense after the play. 88 is disqualified. It's first down. They kicked him out of the ball game. Well, I, I don't know what he did. He hit somebody? I don't know. It didn't look like he hit anyone. He just felt he should have been given the catch. Well, from that angle we had, looks like he might very well have come down inside the playing area. Easily. <laughs> He's out of the ball game. Chicago back on their own 34. Bobby Scott running around looking for somebody. He's over the line of scrimmage. He's over the line of scrimmage. The catch was made by Tim Reitman, but Scott was over the line of scrimmage when he threw it. And Ron Osborne gave Reitman a lick. I'm surprised he is getting up from. He hesitated for a moment. Pretty much the same kind of position that Paul Ricker was in earlier in the ball game. Osborne came up, hit him with shoulder, forearm, and everything else he could muster up. But I don't see a flag on that neighborhood. You? No, I don't see a flag at all. One back here, we're on Scott for going over, throwing the ball after he had crossed the line of scrimmage. But what I do see is number 81 is Tim Reitman, the tight end. Now Osborne will come from the left side of the screen. Let's see where the contact is made. There's a catch. Whoa, that's a shiver. That's, <laughs> that's a forearm. It looks like a pretty darn good hit. The fish is now having a conference. Walk 
the 5 and 15 rule is involved on that play. The 5-yard penalty against the offense will not be marked off. The 15-yard penalty against the defense will be marked off. Once again, we'll take a look at the whole play. Tremaine Johnson is running towards the line of scrimmage, takes off downfield before the ball is snapped. Now we see Bobby Scott throwing the ball. Looked like he was beyond he the was. line of scrimmage, and he was. There's the hit. I don't see a flag right away. Let's see if there's a flag and from what direction it comes from. Uh, I can't tell where the here on the 49-yard line. They hand the ball off to Max Boatner, and Boatner can't go anywhere. As number 62 came thundering in, Andy Canavino, rookie out of Michigan. One of old boys, along with Phil Dokes out of Oklahoma State, number 72. Keith, if the people out there watching this football game were a little confused by that last series of penalties in that play, I don't blame them. I'm still confused. <laughs> well, I'm not sure what happened. 5 and 15. The 15, I think, was a dead. Looked to me like it might have been a dead ball foul. Now, my question is, shouldn't they have marked off 10 instead of 15? Loop it out for Johnson. Too high. Jermaine Johnson couldn't pull it down. Let's put out a Tim Brandt with Wayman Bubs, who's been kicked out of the ball game. Let's find out what the official said. What do you say, Wayman? Well, he said I caught the ball out of bounds, and through my frustration, I was swinging my arms, and I just accidentally tipped his cap, and he said I hit him, and he threw me out of the ball game. So you're done for the day? Yeah, that's it. You threw me out. There's nothing I can do about it. Okay, Keith. Well, that's what happened. He was remonstrating. Any contact with an official, you're gone. Quickly. The ball is in the third down and nine. Look at that. Seven man front. Michigan's offside. Scott gets away from Porker. Got away from Pennywell. That's the one thing that uh, Chicago cannot afford. Bobby Scott is the third starting quarterback that Chicago has had. Greg Landry started, then Tim Cagle, and now Scott. He just can't be running around out there too much because uh, Pennywell, for one, is a great big guy, 225. Scott weighs about uh, 200, maybe, 195. The penalty flag is against Michigan. There's a Michigan man hurt on the play as well. Ron Osborne, who was shaken up when he hit Tim Reitman, on that series of confusing play uh, penalties, came back into the ball game and now is being attended to on the field. Play. That's right. Everybody up on the line of scrimmage, crowding the line of scrimmage right here. It's Pennywell. Number 59, Robert Pennywell, timing it very well. Two blockers have to take on Pennywell because he gets in. He sheds them, splits both of them, and he makes the initial contact to stop the play. That's real good defensive play. 17-yard line, loss of two. Second down, 12, Chicago. They've been down three times knocking on the door now, this being the third, and they've been turned away the previous two times. Once by their own mistake, a fumble. And Scott calls the timeout with 2.07 to go in the first half. Number 80, Marcus Anderson, was on the wrong side of the field. He didn't want to take the time, try and rush it, so he called the timeout. Let's check in with Tim Brent. Keith, you can see the doctor is working on Ronnie Osborne right now. Right, and sometimes you get a little confused, and, and you got to step back and take a look. Tremaine Johnson, the man in motion, as Scott sets up to throw it, has some time. The ball is deflected at the line of scrimmage. One of the big linemen slapped it away. Well, he didn't have too much time. He was trying to wait for his receiver to come open. Tremaine Johnson was being held up at the line of scrimmage by number 21, Oliver Davis, who did a good job of Destroying the timing there. Bobby Scott couldn't get the ball away cleanly. George Allen wanting desperately for his team to put some points on the scoreboard as the clock now sets at two minutes and three seconds here in the second quarter. Ball is just near the 17 of Michigan. toward Truman Johnson and it's pulled away from him by Oliver Davis. And you know what? Johnson almost made that catch. He almost made it. We've seen that same play early in this ball game on the highlight film. It's the same one he scored twice. But this time he makes it a little different. The ball's thrown. Oliver has good position. The watch him just hesitate and try and come over the shoulder inside. Has a good shot at it. He and Davis both had the ball. 
and it goes incomplete. And now the clock has stopped with a two-minute warning. With a minute and fifth. Much will be decided on how well he returns this kickoff as to what Jim Stanley will do with his offense with this short amount of time remaining. Well, it's knocked it out of sight. It's out of the end zone. So it'll be at the 20. For Michigan, down first down. First and ten. Now here's Tim Brandt with Clarence Chapman. One of, the, one of the biggest plays in the first half, naturally, was the block kick by this guy right here, Clarence Chapman, but it hit him flush in the face. Tell us about it. Well, the guy really didn't squeeze the way he should have. It gave me a little avenue to get in there, and the snap was kind of slow, and I got on top of the ball. So when I was able to block it, I put my hands up. It looked like my head blocked it. So, you know, my chin took a card, and they put a few stitches under there. But all in all, you know, I'm all right now. All right, Clarence, keep him going. He, he doesn't look all right. No, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Ken Lacey and Cleo Miller is in the ball game now. Cleo in for the first time today. Veteran out of Arkansas, played nine years. And nothing doing on this one as Lacey lost his footing trying to make his cut to the outside. Trying to turn up Phil, looking for a hole as they were stringing the play out. Terry Miller, who uh, uh, Lynn Swan has been playing some good football since he went over there uh, to Michigan, uh, broke his thumb. So he's. Uh, He's out of the lineup, and they've uh, activated Tony Ellis, who had been with the ball club as a rookie from Michigan State. Tony Ellis has carried the ball for 158 yards with a 3.4 average while he was with the team. It's second down at about 14 now. The ball at the 16, and they're going to keep it on the ground with Lacey coming to the outside. <laughs> See how big and strong he is now because Carl Allen came up and laid the shoulder into him solid. But he still bounced off and turned it back up for a yard. Now, when you talk about the importance of getting blocks downfield, that time number 29, Derek Holloway, was in perfect position to give a good block to spring the runner downfield. But he couldn't get the block, kept him off. Now watch Holloway right there on Allen. He's in position to make the block. Lacey right behind him. Had he got that block on Allen, Lacey could have turned upfield and turned this into a substantial game. Five of them made the team. And a Chicago man now has jumped offside, encroaching on the player, or else a Michigan man moved to draw him off. Don Wilson. Encroachment, number 76 on the defense. Sound like that. 11 man rush. Gets it out. Not a very good kick but there's a good bounce on it. And uh, the short kick plus the bounce keeps Lenny Willis from any kind of a return on it. And so now the chains move, the clock stops. 31 seconds to go. It was a 31-yard punt. Number 58, Will Copley, was a man who got downfield very, very quickly to make sure there was no return on that punt. So the ball is marked at the Chicago 48. And you've got 31 seconds now as the chains are put in place. Officially at 30 yards. And on the snap of the ball, the clock will start. But it'll keep running unless they make a first down. Bobby Scott gets his pass off. It's going to be picked off by John Corker. He threw it right to Corker. He was trying to get it downfield to Johnson, had some pressure. And now Michigan, with the interception by Corker, gets the ball back at their own 49, and Michigan very alertly calls timeout with 21 seconds. And they've got some timeouts to play with here. Bobby Scott was under a little pressure. It looks like his arm was hit just, well, just after he threw it. But the only man in the area to catch his ball is number 57, John Corker. He wisely moves the ball downfield, probably heading towards that sideline once he realized he couldn't get too much farther trying to stop the clock, but he couldn't, so they used one of their timeouts. Change of possession. Now they've got the timeouts to play with with 21 seconds. Let's see if they go for Carter. Pretty good protection to the sidelines. It is tipped. It is caught by Carter. Oh, what a catch. Great concentration by Anthony and a timeout. Lacey good. was a little hot. He thought somebody had hit AC late, but Carter, who has a good head on him, he is a very cool customer. He got Lacey right out of there in a hurry. Michigan, Carter, but their first timeout. Michigan's called the timeout. 
Anthony Carter runs a short rod here. It's turned around. Now the ball right there is tipped just a little bit. You see it come wobbling in, concentrates, comes back for it. Now right there he is not touched. He can get up and run. And then number 56, Ed Smith, comes in and lays on a pretty solid hit. And that's why Ken Lacey was a little upset. Gain on the play is about nine yards. And Michigan now with two timeouts remaining and 11 seconds. So they get a couple of plays off here. Central Division standings coming into this ball game. Chicago can win the division and get into the playoffs with a win today. Michigan, if they win today and beat Arizona next Sunday, then they win the Central Division. Tampa Bay obviously very much involved in the wild card spot, as is Boston. And of course, Chicago, Michigan, one or the other, could also be very much involved in the wild card situation. So you got really four teams when you talk wild card, and uh, three of them are in the Central Division. Tampa Bay is playing Denver on Monday night in Tampa. They get Chicago, they split with Tampa, but Michigan scored the most points in their two contests with Tampa, so that gives them the edge over them. They need to get in about 10 yards closer to give Bojovic a fair chance at a field goal. A bear under pressure. Gets it off. It is in the end zone. It is a touchdown for Michigan. As Holloway kept running through the end zone, Chicago was shouting, he's on the line. But apparently the officials running right with him didn't call it so. It's a 41-yard touchdown strike by Hebert to Holloway. And how cool was Bobby Hebert under pressure, Paul Lorch giving chase. He tiptoed, tight-wired himself down the sideline, waiting for someone to come. Now watch Holloway. He's running across the field. Now this ball is thrown over his head, but he sees it. Now he breaks where Virgil Livers doesn't break, gets behind him. The ball's thrown deep enough into the end zone where he can make the catch. And the extra point is good. And it, with time, they lost the ball. Michigan has had three scoring strikes, and we'll be back for half. But how many times have you seen these games, the outcome of these games? Did Carter did a good job right there. Carl Allen coming up very, very quickly to make the tackle. But again, Bobby A. Bear dropping back a little short half rollout, getting plenty of protection, plenty of time. Take a good look. The Michigan offensive line did a great job. Look at the red shirts getting cut down. There you see Anthony Carter cutting it off. He makes a catch, and right there it looks like the first down, but the official with the marker is backing away from the line, of, from the sideline, as to not make that marker a weapon to hurt the ball. Play. Second down and one. Carter. Carter's gone out. Cleo Miller gets around the corner, and on second down and one, Cleo turns it upfield all the way to the Chicago 26. The way the Michigan offensive line is handling Chicago's defensive front. And the way they're able to now, if, they, if they're able to generate a running game and sit on this football and wear down the Chicago defense, look out. Well, coming into the ball game, we thought that the offensive line in Michigan and the defensive line of Chicago might have neutralized each other, leaving the game in the hands of the offense of Chicago versus John Corker and company of the Michigan defense. Well, the Michigan defense has done well, but it's the offense of Michigan has really put the points on the board, scoring on the big play. 26 yard line, first down, A Bear looks for Carter, and the ball is knocked away incomplete. Almost picked off. Number One of the guys in the red shirt had his hands on it. That was number 52, Stan White, who had his chance to catch it. Number 56, it was Ed Smith who came in and caused all the problems on this play. Watch Ed Smith, there he is, number 56, who comes in from behind. The arm is going forward when he hits him. And just on the other side, Ed Stan White had the ball go right through his hands. Now watch, watch White, number 52, coming to the top of the pitcher right here. The ball, Ed Smith with the hit, right there in his hands. It should have been an interception, but that's one of the reasons why he's a lineman. It's a good thing because Carter was open. Second down and 10 from the 26. There goes Cleo Miller the other way. Cuts it back, spins it forward, and he's close to a first down. Well, those 30-year-old legs are really churning. Yeah, they certainly are. Doing a very, very good job. That time, number 63, Tom Dornbrook, was able to get a good block to spring him to the outside, give him a little running room. 
And then Holloway, number 29, did a better job on the outside, screening off the cornerback. It's third down in the yard. Don Eccles comes in now to line up with a double tight end alignment. He, in fact, replaces Anthony Carter for this play. John Williams and Cleo Miller. And they send Eccles in motion. Give the ball to Williams, and he's got the first down and then some as he's down to the 11-yard line. So here's Michigan in a very impressive drive. 8.50 to go in the third quarter and leading 21-3. to three. Came in. They didn't have great field position when they took over. Lanell Fee, Tom Moriarty having some problems on the opening kickoff. But the most impressive drive, matter of fact, the only real drive of the ball game is this one for the Michigan Panthers. Right. It's first and 10 at the Chicago 11. That's Cleo Miller, and he's caught back at the 14. Little indecision on the play. Yes, a little indecision in trying to figure out which red jersey to try and avoid. There were so many around him. That time, the blocking wasn't great. Number 25, Eddie Brown, was the man that came up, along with Mark Bubin, number 63, out of Tufts to make the tackle on the play. Lacey is back now, having shaken off whatever it was bothering him as he left off the field. Seems to have, just inside the 14. Seems to have cooled off just a little bit. Looks like some thunderstorm weather on the way. Second down and 12. Inside Lacey. He's back to the 10, and he has finally wrestled down. So they'll give him the 10-yard line. Carl Allen and uh, Jim Fonhorst and Eddie Brown, three of them, are wrestling with the big back from Tulsa. Now that's a pickup of four yards, a tough four yards for Lacey. And there is some hitting out there, a little counter play. He gets the ball inside. Number 74, Ehrman, is right there. Stops him a little bit. He gets away. Then he takes on Eddie Brown. Eddie Brown can't handle him alone. Number 32, Carl Allen comes in. Then it's a linebacker. It's also giving a little help <laughs> to bring him down. Third down and about eight. Ball just over the 10. They put an S on Lacey's jersey. They might call him Superman. There's some movement. 63, Tom Dornbrook. So the offense. Michigan has now been flagged seven times for six, six yards, and Chicago five times for 40. A couple of those turns against Chicago took them out for the position in the first half. You figure pass here on third and 14. Blitz is on. Over the middle. It is touchdown Holloway. Number 22, Lance Shields. Ricky Evan Drake was in, defending on the play. 15-yard touchdown strike. Bobby Abair again, continuing his first-half success, finds Holloway for Holloway's second touchdown of the game. Holloway did a great job getting away from coverage here, but making a great adjustment after the ball is thrown. There you see he's being grabbed a little bit in the face mask there. The ball is thrown as he breaks to the outside. Lance Shield blocks him, blocks his vision, but he stays with the ball, makes a tough catch going down, for the touchdown. It's now 27 to 3 as Bojovic comes in for the extra point try. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. But they're all pointing at the center saying he's moving the ball, doing something wrong. Encroachment number 79 on the defense. Don Wilson, the referee. So that's six flags on Chicago now. So Derek Holloway, who's very effective. He was an outstanding football player for Lou Holtz at Arkansas. Not a big man, but as you have seen today, he has great concentration. And speed. And speed. You yeah. saw that last touchdown, a pretty darn good move, getting away from the bump on the line of scrimmage, getting his man turned. Great deal in the last three weeks especially in the drive to win the division championship. High snap. Taylor gets it down, and Bojovic cannot punch it through. He pulled it out of there. He missed it. And it's a 27-3 ball game. If Michigan wins today here, and they right now in pretty good shape, 
They beat Arizona next week. They win the Central Division Championship. That's Doug Dennison with the ball for Chicago. He's a running back, and he picks his way out across the 35 to the 37. So pretty good field position now for the Chicago Blitz as they try to get something going in the ball game. Their offense has been relatively impotent so far today. 24 points and needing some. Bobby Scott. Throws for Tremaine Johnson. Johnson to midfield. First down for the Blitz. John Corker, number 57, 21, Oliver Davis, making a stop on the play. So far in the ball game, they really have not been able to stop Tremaine Johnson. Prior to that catch, he had four for 89 yards in the first half, that being his first catch of the second half. Another player for the Blitz. This Michigan ball club, if they go on to win this ball game and beat Arizona next week to win this division, they get that first playoff game at home. It's a cool to be a tough football team. I think it could be a very tough football game. We talked about Philadelphia, Michigan, how Philadelphia came back on them. Before the ball game, Ray Penny told me he himself, a number of the guys weren't in that great of shape. Now, I think you're looking at a well-conditioned Michigan offensive line. Scott on third down and seven. Gets his pass off, but he threw it just as he was, he was hit just as he released it by John Corker. Lacey. That ball came loose. Looks like a Michigan Panther fell on it very, very quickly. It's Chris Guthrie, number 70, big tackle. Good job, Chris. Was and it? it's first down at the Michigan 40. He was able to get to a seam in that zone defense, caught the ball while backing up, and continued to back up as opposed to trying to turn around, expecting, I, I think, another tough hit from one of those cornerbacks. Bobby this guy gets plenty of time. You see right there, good angle. He lost it right over the defensive man's head, over the linebacker's head. Right there, right when he was backing up, number 22, Clarence Chapman making the stop. First down at the 38, Doug Dennison trying to go to the outside. Corker got a hold of him, slowed him down, and then he's put away by Bentley. But he's got some yardage out of it, down to about the 33. Here's Tim Brent. Finish lead. Third down, they need a yard. Long gets it. There's a penalty flag. That may be against Michigan. Number 22, Clarence Chapman. Saying He's something. got a busted chin already. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> it's, it's right. Robert Scott hasn't got things quite organized the way he wanted. But he's going to go ahead with the play anyway. He gives it to Tremaine Johnson. Three blockers out in front. Cuts it back. Goes down inside the 10 to about the 6. Long. Penalty flag as Long gets to the 2. Everybody creeping up, trying to get through. And right there, number 25, John Arnott comes in and puts Bobby Scott on the turf. Oh, the ball goes back the other way, inside the nine. We have a personal foul, roughing the passer. Number 25 on the defense. That's an automatic first down. First down goal with 24 seconds to play in the third quarter. 17. Right now, the camera behind the defensive line. We'll see number 25 right there. Watch him coming back from his. Oh, we're back to live action right now. And just short of the eight yard line. They keep it on the ground, give it to Dennison. Dennison struggles inside the five, gets to the four. Washington with the score 21 to 14 against LA. With four minutes gone in the fourth quarter, Tony Bodie, the rookie from Montana State, scored on this six-yard run, barely making it into the end zone as he dies for the chalk stripe. This tied the score 21-all. And exactly four minutes later, the Washington Federals came back with Craig James racing from an unbalanced line, going through the opening and going 18 yards to score his second touchdown of the day. And the Washington Federals, with six minutes and 28 seconds to go, have gone back on top, 28-21. Let's go back to Keith Jackson in Chicago. Okay, Bill Fleming, you've got a pretty good ball game to watch on Washington. Right here, the statistics for three quarters of play. The big difference in the third quarter in this ball game has been the fact that Michigan held the ball for 10 minutes and one second of that third period, dominating the time driving the length of the field in the opening possession to put the ball in the end zone. Three tight ends in there now. Scott pitches out to Kevin Long, cuts it back. 
goes to the goal line, but does not. He does get in there. They give him the touchdown. Kevin Long coming into the ball game, needing 40 yards to go into the 1,000-yard area. Gets four yards on this touchdown run. You haven't heard Tim Spencer's name in a while. He is not out on the field, has not been in there. He's on the sidelines. He has turf toe. He has heat fatigue. He has a headache. And we may not see him anymore today. But right now, an important thing is Chicago finally gets a touchdown. And if they can make the extra point, they can pull within 17. There's Tim Spencer. Chicago goes seven plays, 51 yards, three minutes and 25 seconds. They're going for two. Adjusting the 30-second clock. Down to 20 seconds. Fumble by Scott. Gets away with it for a moment. Throws the ball, and it's incomplete. You got a penalty flag in the end zone. Lenny Willis and Clarence Chapman tangled up in the end zone. And you got a flag. Lenny's been doing a lot of lawyering out on the field today. <laughs> and this time he may have won his point. For the most part, he's been pretty quiet throughout the day. He hasn't been very productive at all. We have pass interference on the offense. On the offense. Foul is declined. The point is no good. So it's against Willis. 27 to 9, the score. That exchange there by the center by this guy getting lucky that is being able to pick up the ball and still have a chance of executing this play under pressure gets the ball away it's incomplete and the penalty on Lenny Willis which had it been complete would have forced them to try it all over again Bobby Scott don't see it Lenny Willis obviously pushed off somewhere along that pass route so you've got 14 minutes and 49 seconds to play in the ball game. It's picked off by Cleo Miller. And Cleo, under a full head of steam, they lead 27-9. They'll run it as long as the Chicago will let them. Bear back to throw. He gets his pass off. It's intercepted by Ed Smith. And Smith comes back to the Michigan 37. Chicago's still in it. All during the first half, it was Michigan coming up with the big plays. The pass plays to Ken Lacey. The pass plays to Papa Smurf, Derek Holloway. To Ellis Island on their way to a better life. Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty offered the promise of freedom. They are symbols of what this country stands for. But now they need our help. The USFL is making a donation for every ticket they sell to help restore this beloved national game. is in the wide receiver position for Chicago. The pass is thrown to Anderson, Marcus Anderson out of Tulane in 37. Scott back. He goes to Reitman, the tight end. First down, Michigan 25. So Tim Reitman is having a big day. After having played very little, he's caught six balls today for 80 yards. He's having a big day, but he's also paying a price for it because he's been getting hit pretty good. Right there, he just slips out around John Corker, gets him backing up, cuts underneath him, makes a catch, puts his head down, gets more than enough for the first down. Yeah, but Corker got hit by Bentley, and Corker has to leave the game. Two linebackers colliding as they made the tackle, and John's out of there. That gets Mike Edwards in, the outside back of spot. It's first down, just inside the 25 of Michigan. Anderson's the man in motion. Scott hands the ball to Doug Dennison, and Dennison down to the 20 for five. The fans are now beginning to chant. Let's go blitz, number 76, former teammate of the mine, John Banizak, making the tackle. Eastern Michigan played eight years in professional football. The fans yelling, let's go blitz. Would love to see their team come from behind, wrap up the division championship here. 
On this hot day, they drew 25,041. That's the second largest crowd for the Blitz this season. That's really about a four-yard pickup. Call it second down and six. Corker is back in. Michigan almost jumped. Bobby Scott looking. Going to run it right up the middle. Hook slide at the 13. That's the first down. Forster cut again. Dennison into the middle. Nothing. Penalty flag on top of it. First and 20. Scott's pass. Incomplete. Jermaine Johnson went as high as he could possibly leap. He stretched his six foot three frame into the heavens, but he couldn't quite come down with it. Number 25, John Arnold, 22, Clarence Chapman making a stop. He comes up, catchable pass. He gets up high enough. It's in his hands, but he just couldn't quite hang on to it. And then he's hit for making the effort. When you're a receiver, and you're going to go up for a pass like that. You always hope you come down with it because you're going to have to pay a price regardless of whether you catch it or not. So it's second down and 20. Now we're ready to go on second down and 20. Got the throw and no pressure. Got to go for Johnson. And it's spoiled by number 21, Oliver Davis. Tremaine Johnson running a, a corner route or a flag route, if you will, coming inside and breaking back to the outside, angling toward the corner of the end zone, slipped and fell down, slipped and stumbled, I should say, in the end zone. Watch this move here. He brings his corner, brings his man inside and breaks up and back to the outside. He slips right there, regains his balance, makes the effort, but just can't get quite high enough to make a catch. It is third down and 20 at the Michigan 23. Chicago doesn't get in here. Don't think they got a whole lot of chance left. Who knows? We saw Trump score 11, uh, Birmingham score 11 points in a minute and 41 seconds last week. Bobby Scott's pass, lofted up for Lenny Willis, knocked away. Great play by Arno. John Arno timed it just right, coming over the top, angling. Good snap. What do you lay? So Corral adds to Chicago's total with 10 minutes and 31 seconds to play in the game. It is now Michigan, 27. Get down. We've got another Chicago player who's down on the field. Now we're getting to the point. They've been out there for so long, spending the energy to 21. Not bad. Please don't score again. Here comes, Here comes Bob. 36 They go to Lacey, and he gets outside. And that's troublesome. And that big guy gets outside, he's going to get four or five yards practically every time. Well, Lacey did a good job picking up the yardage, being knocked out of bounds by number 24, Virgil Livers, but he made one mistake. He went out of bounds. And Abear is going to throw. And he hits Anthony Carter. And Carter is down at the 49. I don't uh -oh. think the Chicago man... Uh, Realized or felt, however, that uh, Anthony Carter possibly was going to get up and take off. Well, Anthony took umbrage to it, and then one of the bigger fellows named. I think it was Lacey that came yeah, up Lacey. Uh, and, and uh, popped somebody and knocked him back. Yeah, he had a long drive, one consistent drive on the first position of the third period. Third down and eight. Blitz, Allen doesn't get there in time. The pass is caught. Anthony Carter. Adding another catch. Bobby Hebert took a, a blow from Carl Allen, blindsided him on the blitz, and he is very slow to get up. Well, fortunately for Bear, you know, if you can watch 32. Carl Allen, number 32, coming in from the outside. Fortunately, I would say for Bear, even though he's hit and shook up a little bit in the play, he got hit on his left shoulder. Now, this throwing arm. He gets that left shoulder whacked up a bit. They tape him up and put him right back in the ball game. 
Carter now six catches for 98 yards. It's a first down for Michigan at the 45. McLean is in and Carter is out for Michigan. Frank McLean out of North Texas State. Hebert gives the ball to Ken Lacey. And they've got Lacey behind the line of scrimmage. They finally shove him out of bounds. Carl Lorch and Eddie Brown get him about two yards short of the line of scrimmage. Another long, long football game. Eight and a half minutes to play. At the 42, second down. Carter comes back in. That's Cleo Miller. A yard. Trying to take advantage of the Chicago defense. Everybody up on the line of scrimmage with a quick draw. Chicago anticipating a pass. Hands off to Cleo Miller, but the defense does its job, and they stop them. Jim Stanley versus George Allen. So far, the knot is going to Jim Stanley. And a day of the big play for Michigan. Number 52 came in from his outside linebacker position. Bobby A. there was having problems in the first half, getting the handoff to the running back. That time, defensive line of Chicago coming in very, very quickly, putting on the pressure, causing the form fumble. Right here, Bobby A. Bear, a little reverse pivot, trying to come inside. Can't get the ball to Lacey because he's hit. Oh, somebody hit him. That's right. Looks like it might have been Lathrop that was inside. Number 70 that made the tackle, made the hit, causing the fumble. And Stan White, number 52, recovering. Another big break for the Chicago Blitz. They have the football first down at the Michigan 37. And Bobby Scott trying to go quick with it. Goes as far as he can for Lenny Willis. Good. They bump. They don't call it deep. Call pass interference. Ten out of ten times in that particular play. Yeah, but number wide receiver. Chicago could use the 15. <laughs> Second down and ten. Got back. Got to be looking for Johnson. He's over the middle. He got it. He got a first down. It's a 25. In the ball game. Johnson again. Another first down as he gets to the 13. You know, one of the reasons I'd go to that side, one of the big reasons I'd go to that side, is Oliver Davis is, is prone to give you a big, big cushion, and John Corker is bone tired. Yes, he is. Right there, Corker doesn't get to the outside quick enough to stop the uh, pass and, or cut off the angle of the pass. And Davis is just too far deep, too far back. You see him right there. He's dropping straight back instead of dropping back at an angle. Ball is just short of the 12, where it's first down Chicago. They give it to Kevin Long. He's over the 10. Passed it right by number 50, Ray Bentley. Nine yards. A superior pass and catch by Bobby Scott. And number two, Tremaine Johnson. The Tennessee Grambling Connection. Will move to the outside. The head fake. He gets inside. It's all timing. There's going to be some contact. There's a lot of people there. Concentration. He goes up. Brings it down in the end zone. Tremaine Johnson brings the Chicago Blitz within a realistic range of getting back and winning this ball game. They called a timeout here, did they, or did they not? No, they did not. They're going to go for one, maybe. Tom Rosance, the holder, backup quarterback. Only 5:22 to play in a ball game. They're going for one. Now they're in a position where they will have to go for two to tie if they can score another touchdown. It's now a 27 to 19 ball game. Take another look. Bobby Scott, he gets plenty of time, good block. Z 
zips it right in to Tremaine Johnson. That touchdown brings him within range with five minutes and 22 seconds to play in this ball. 5.22 to play in a ball game. A high hanging kick, feed. Three yards deep in the end zone, coming out with it. Gets to the sidelines, gets across the 20, and is out of bounds at about the 23. Lance Shield. Tackle, out of break for Chicago. Now, once again, it's up to the Chicago Public. 23 yard line. A Bear on first down wants to throw. Gets it off deep. And the penalty flag is thrown, and you may get a foul called as a hey. hey. A Bear rolls it out. Gets it off. Carter's over there, and Carter's got the ball. KGO TV, Channel 7, San Francisco. Lacey try to trap him and uh, wedge him out of there, and then couldn't quite do it. He moved it out to the 49, 40, close to the 49. Lacey's been a, been a real tough workhorse this afternoon. Now I'm out They go back to the ground game, and there's a the first down as Cleo Miller breaks it all the way down. At Michigan, 10 and 6. At Chicago, 1 today, or if they somehow win this ball game, they would lock up the division championship. Michigan with a win here and one at home next week against Arizona would become the Central Division champions. It's first down, call up the 36-yard line where they have marked it. Hand it off inside to Lacey. And he on his first 12 rushes of the day, picked up 72 yards. On his last nine rushes, he has only picked up seven yards, and that 6.1 per rush average for Michigan has dropped down to 4.6 compared to three for Chicago. Second down and seven from the 33. That's Cleo Miller stacked up at the line of scrimmage. He'll get maybe one, and so you'll be there. Hey, Bear going for Carter. He's wide open. Touchdown. I told him not to leave that young man in one-on-one -on -one coverage. He was having too good a day. He's too fine an athlete, too much speed. Just ran straight down the field, breaking inside for the post. Beat number 32, Carl Allen, Bobby Bear with a play action rollout, bombed him downfield, no contest. Let's and take that a look will at do it. it. Come up, he's got a 10 yard cushion, angles to the outside. Carl Allen turns and then just stops. Just stops. Anthony Carter catches his second touchdown pass of the day. That's the fifth TD pass for Bobby Bear, which is a USFL single game record. Boyovic for the extra point. Good. Well, you can hear the door slamming on Chicago now as Michigan runs out to a 34. All fell off the tee to the offensive attack. And that move right there might be singled out as a one that has brought them to this position right here. Willis runs it across the end zone. Out of bounds. Got lofts one. That is incomplete. Upfield for second down and ten. Scott Sack. Scott Sack by Phil Dopes, number 72. And uh, the Michigan Club defensive people now have sacked Scott four times today. And on the season, the Michigan defensive unit, 68 sacks. That's a lot. That's by the few. Phil Dokes has 19 tackles to his credit. Picks up another sack, which gives him a total of three and a half. Deep on the offense, decline. Minute 45. Scott swings it out to Boatner. Boatner gets one block, gets up the sidelines. Gets a first down, maybe. Yes, he did. He stepped out on the 31. John Arnold, number 25, pushed him out of bounds. He got a good block downfield by number 80, Marcus Anderson, which allowed him to pick up that first down. Tremaine Johnson has gone to the locker room dehydrated. We won't see him anymore today. Motion. Bobby Scott, same play to Boatner. Again, Boatner brings in a big play. The Michigan secondary is playing center field. And that's leaving some room for the back coming up. He wanted 
to throw the ball the other side to Willis. Couldn't. Gets the pass down to the near side to Anderson. And Anderson makes the catch for another Chicago first down at the 38. He was trying to throw the ball to Lenny Willis in the same play he had thrown earlier to Tremaine Johnson. The same play that Tremaine scored touchdowns on against Birmingham. The quick takeoff down the sideline. And he was pump faking the ball because, well, Lenny Willis couldn't get away from the jam. Then he came off after a little pressure and found Marcus Anderson running around on the far sideline, or our near sideline, and he was able to make the catch, tap down for the first, and the clock stops to move the markers. From the 39, just inside the 39. Shot down the middle and misses Lenny Willis. At Denver in Tampa. Denver has not been easy lately. Denver hasn't been easy for anybody all year. Not at all. Second down and ten. Corker's got it. John Corker spending pretty much, I am sure, and about nine for Chicago. Forty-five seconds. The play in the ball game in Chicago has called timeout. They don't hook up on this one. It may be over. And they won't hook up on this one. Bobby Scott is brought down by Alan Hughes. Back at his 46, 7-yard line. And that'll do it for the ball game. All Michigan has to do now is run out of the clock. The sixth sack of the Chicago quarterback. Todd Berry, our spotter. Dave Bernson, our stats. That's the time remaining. 1,000 yards. He will total 993 on the season. A Bear gives to Lacey. Lacey is buried by Lorch and Lathrop. But that gets the clock rolling. Chicago has one timeout remaining. And they may or may not choose to spin it. Bach is rolling along towards 20 seconds to go in the game. A 34 to 19 ball game. I'm a little surprised it was so decisive for Michigan. I am not surprised that Michigan was in position to win this ball game because Chicago has played, has had to come up for so many ball games over the recent weeks. And this one is in the books. The final score, Michigan 34, Chicago 19. Stay tuned now for the National Sports Festival.